Hey, I'm Ken Levine, creative director of Irrational Games, and we're working on Bioshock Infinite, and we're here in New York to check out Comic-Con. I went to my first Comic-Con around 1990 in San Diego when it was this little tiny thing. It was nothing. I remember my friend interviewed Jack Kirby there, and uh, he's a huge hero of mine. He's this giant in terms of pop culture and in terms of the work he did and the influence he had on me. Look at the cover of Bioshock 1. That's a Jack Kirby pose. I love Comic-Con because it, it was sort of really the first place for nerds. to go, especially when a long time ago where it, it, nerds weren't such a po part of popular culture. So I just love going to the shows and Hey, I'm Ken Levine, creative director of Irrational Games and we're working on Bioshock Infinite and we're here in New York to check out Comic-Con. I went to my first Comic-Con around 1990 in San Diego when it was this little tiny thing. It was nothing. I remember my friend interviewed Jack Kirby there and uh, he's a huge hero of mine. He's this giant in terms of pop culture and in terms of the work he did and the influence he had on me. Look at the cover of Bioshock 1. That's a Jack Kirby pose. I love Comic-Con because it, it was sort of really the first place for nerds to go. Especially when a long time ago where it, nerds weren't such a po part of popular culture. So I just love going to the shows and seeing fans because they're so honest about their love for things. They're not self-conscious at all. And it's a place you can really let that all hang out. I'm a big movie nerd too. And a lot of people ask me this question. It's like, well, you had in Rapture, everything was dark and sort of traditional haunted house kind of setting. I really wanted a different look for this game. You know, and the look was, as I defined to my team, was it's July 4th, 1912, but not the actual July 4th, 1912. It's what sort of certain politicians remember July 4th, 1912, this sort of Americana, this perfect America, this perfect summer's day, and that's what I wanted Columbia to feel like. But then you sort of feel the, what's festering underneath that as you explore it. And the question is, well, how do you make that scary? And I started thinking of, you know, some of my favorite films that were strong in horror, and I thought of Blue Velvet, the very opening shot of, you know, that ear lying in the grass and in the sunlight. And that's very similar. It's sort of this idealized town, but there's something sort of sinister growing underneath it. I thought of The Shining, when Danny's riding his uh, big wheel through the corridors, and he comes across those two little girls. And what is that? That's two girls dressed with little makeup on, in identical dresses, standing in a fluorescent lit, lit hallway. Forever. And ever, and ever. And it's terrifying. And now it's interesting, working on Infinite, that we've started the game, we're thinking about the city and the sort of nationalistic, patriotic, nationalistic, religious components of the city. A lot of people said to us, oh, you're just sort of copying the Tea Party. And in a way we were copying the Tea Party because the Tea Party is, is another expression of a movement that's happened over and over again in American and European and every kind of history. And unsurprisingly now, after we introduced the other group, the opposing group, the Vox Populi, the much more sort of leftist, populist group. Shortly afterwards, as we introduce that to the world, you see the Occupy Wall Street movement. And I'm not saying in any way there's like, oh, we inspired, not even, that, that's a totally separate thing. But the reason that happens is because these movements happen over and over again, and quite often they happen as reactions to each other. I think, you know, when you talk about characters and the relationships and sort of people feeling that they possess other characters, whether it's like the Big Daddy and Little Sister in Bioshock 1, or the relationship between an, an adult and a sort of guardian figure, which is Songbird and Elizabeth and her struggle to get away from that adult figure. You will not let him take me back. At some point, what is a natural process? You push away. That relationship is so clear, you know, between parent and child, and the dynamics of that relationship are very clear. So when you draw on that relationship, you immediately have a language, a visual language, which you're working in. Whenever I'm working with a game designer on my team, and he says, okay, here's what happens here. The player's gonna realize at this point. I said, no, don't tell me the player's gonna realize. Tell me what the player is seeing and hearing. Because that's all we have. So that language, the visual language of those relationships are so in ingrained in us, it's very easy to, to leverage our understanding of those. So even in fantastical stories, like we try to tell in Bioshock, they need to be grounded because that's what helps us understand them. <laughs> what would Bioshock in the future look like? Bioshock is not really time period dependent. You know, I think people were surprised when the second game was set in a very different time period than the first game. I was kind of struck by how surprised people were because to me, again, we're always trying to deal with themes that are very human and very natural and tend to occur throughout history. So whether it's in the future or the past, it doesn't really matter because there's still people there. One of the first books I was inspired by when I started making games was a book called Red Mars by King Stanley Robinson, which is basically a very hard science fiction book about a Mars colony. And they're going to Mars and like, this is gonna be great. We're gonna get away from all the problems of humanity and the bigotry and this and that. 
What they forget about is they bring people with them, and they bring all their problems with them because they brought people with them. They thought it was they were leaving the problems. They brought them. You know, they just they are the problem. I really was inspired by that, and so I don't think the period in history really matters. I think it's what kind of story you're telling, and does that story relate to the experience we have as people? <laughs> Watching complex.com.